Praise the Lord, saints of God. Glory be to God. Blessed be the God and Father of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ the righteous, the one who has redeemed us, the one who has saved us, the one who is preserving and keeping us. Oh, he's the victorious one. Oh, he's the enthroned one. He's the exalted one. He's the most excellent one. And he's seated right there at the throne of God where all power in heaven and earth has been given to him. Glory be to God. And he gave that same power that he used to conquer Satan and all of his cohorts, that same power that he used to defeat the devil, that same power that he used to overcome every test, trial, and situation. He gave that same ability to us. Woo, glory be to God. The Bible says in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, Behold, I give unto you power, woo, glory, to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So that same power that Jesus used to overcome the devil, that same power that Jesus used to conquer, amen, sickness and disease, he gave us that same power, glory be to God, to sustain us, to preserve us, to help us to do the same thing that he did while he was on the earth, amen. We have the access to that same power, glory be to God. Well, you be, may be asking me, what does power mean? It means the ability to do something. Who does God have the ability to do something? Yes, the Bible says in Jeremiah 32, verse 17, amen, O oh God, you have made the heavens and the earth by thy great power, glory to God, and you uphold all things by the word of your power, Hebrews 11. 1 verse 3. Amen. So God does everything according to his power, his ability to do something. And the Bible says there is nothing too difficult. There is nothing too hard for him. The Bible tells us where this power is located or where the Lord has designated it. Amen. The Bible says in Proverbs 18, 19, death and life is in the power of your tongue. It's in the power of what you consistently say. Amen. So your power, the, what you say is either authorizing the devil to do what he came to do, steal, kill, and destroy, or what you say is authorizing Jesus to do what he came to do. And that is to give life and that more abundantly. Amen. Glory to God. You activate or you release this ability to do something by what you say. Amen. Get a hold of this revelation. And see, God has subjected himself, amen, and all of his activities that he'll do in your life, his intervention and attention in your affairs is subjected to his power, his ability to do something. Ephesians 3 verse 20, the Bible tells us, now unto him who is able, Glory to God, to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. How is he going to do it? According to the power that's at work in you. Amen. Glory be to God. And we activate, we release this power by what we say. Death in life is in the power of the tongue. That's why the Bible tells us in the book of Joel, amen, Joel chapter 3, verse 10, it says, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Let the sick say, I am healed. Glory be to God. Psalms 107, verse 2, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Oh, will you say something? Oh, glory to God. As a believer, amen, the power to do it is released. Oh, glory to God. I said the power to do it is released by what you say. Amen. Woo, go. We on to something, you all. I want to welcome you out to our Word Encounter Hour. This is the moment, the time, the setting that God has arranged for us 
to have an encounter with him through his word for a change of story. Amen. This is the setting where Jesus want to reproduce himself to you. I ain't talking about that religious tradition of Jesus that don't do nothing for people. I'm talking about this Jesus who is ever present. Glory to God. The Bible says in, in 1 John 3 verse 8 that he's present to destroy the works of the devil. I'm talking about this Jesus that do something for you. This Jesus that loves you. This Jesus who is committed to you. This Jesus who will never leave or forsake you. I'm talking about this Jesus that do something. Amen for you. Amen. Glory to God. So go get your Bibles, get your pen and a notepad so you can follow along with us as we refer to scripture. You can write these scripture references down. And in days to come, you can go back over them, renew your mind, strengthen, fortify your faith. Amen. And watch God intervene in your affairs. Amen. Glory be to God because he subjected himself, amen, to the power that's at work in you. Amen. Now, amen, let's let's get back on this, this, uh, this revelation we were working on when we open up. Amen. And then we'll follow the Lord as he directs us. Amen. And I trust that you prayed and you are praying and you are believing with me tonight. Amen. For an encounter with the Lord through his word. Amen. Because there's one thing that answers everything and that's the word of God. Jesus said in Mark chapter 13, verse 31, he said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will remain forever. Glory be to God. So we're going to encounter the Lord through his word tonight. Amen. We want a change of story. Amen. We want him to perfect, improve, make better, and complete the good work that he began in us. Hallelujah. We've been decreeing and declaring at the ministry that this is our year of perfection. What are we saying? The Lord will improve, make better, and complete the good works that he began in us. Amen. Why? Because he's the author and the finisher of our faith. And our latter is going to be better than our former and our end than the beginning. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Do you have your expectations on today? Are you believing with me to have an encounter with the Lord through the word where you won't be disappointed? According to Romans 10 verse 11, the Bible said, they who put their trust in Jesus shall not be made ashamed. Amen. Glory be to God. The only person that's going to be made ashamed is the devil. The only person that's going to be made ashamed is the situations, the tests and trials that you've been facing. Glory to God because God has arranged this moment, amen, as a moment of change. I just heard that in my spirit that the Lord has given us a moment of change. Mm, a moment of change. Oh, that's in my spirit. I'm in that moment. Amen. I'm in that moment of change that God has arranged for me in Christ. Oh, there's going to be a shifting and a lifting tonight. Oh, there's, there's going to be divine speed and acceleration of good manifested in your life tonight. Why don't you go ahead and reach out to a co-worker, a neighbor, a, a neighbor, a relative, a friend, and get them hooked on to this word supply tonight. Amen. Tell them that there's one thing that answers everything, and that's the word of God. Inform them that all they need is a word that God has subjected all of their crisis, all of their concerns to them engaging their soul in the word. Amen. Glory be to God. Well, get a friend hooked on, invite someone. Amen. Even after this uh, uh, message is, is finished tonight, amen, send it to some people. Amen. Glory to God. Send it out. Be a word supply to others. Amen. Glory to God. Forward it to them. Amen. Get them. Amen. Their supply of the word. Their help from the Lord. Amen. All right. Amen. Let's get back on this, uh, you know, this, this, this power of God. I don't know if we're going to finish on that. I have several things in my heart that the Lord has been really dealing with me about. Amen. But we'll just follow him. Amen. Be led by the Spirit. Amen. Glory be to God. The power of God. The force are the effects 
of the power of God. Amen. Glory to God. Now, look here in, 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 in uh, Ephesians 3.20. Notice what he said there. He said, now under God who is able. See, he has the power, the ability to do something. What does he have their power and ability to do? To do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ever ask or think. Whew. He has the ability to do that. Amen. Well, if he has the ability to do it, why, why don't he do it? He can't without your cooperation and participation. If he could, he would. His love would require him to do it if he could do it without your cooperation and participation. Amen. Glory to God. But he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think according. See, it's according to something. What is it according to? The power that's at work in you. Amen. Glory to God. See, his ability is at work in you by what you say. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Amen. Glory to God. Where is it at? It's in the power of the tongue. Amen. So instead of letting your words work for, their, for your situation, what you face and how you feel and what others are doing for you, let your words work. For what God did for you in Christ. Woo! Glory! Glory! What did he do for me in Christ? Psalms 107 verse 20. The Bible says he redeemed you from the hand of the enemy. And if he's already redeemed you from the hand of the enemy, he wants you to say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Woo! Glory! When you say it, the power of God, the ability of God goes into motion, goes into effect to do it and manifest, amen, what you just said, amen. So if you redeem, you're supposed to be saying so. You're supposed to be saying what you are redeemed from. What are you redeemed from? I'm redeemed from sickness. I'm redeemed from disease. I'm redeemed from worry. I'm redeemed from fear. I'm redeemed from anxiety. I'm redeemed from depression. I'm redeemed from poverty. I'm redeemed from lack. I'm redeemed from insufficiency. I am the redeemed of the Lord, and I do say so. Whoa! The devil can't defeat you without your cooperation. Amen. If he could, amen, then Paul never would have said, I wrote to the church of Ephesus in Ephesians 4, verse 27. He said, give the devil no place. Woo. So in order for the devil to have a place, I had to give him one. Mm. Glory be to God. And how do you give the devil a place? The same way you give Jesus a place, by saying, hmm. Oh, glory to God. Amen. See, before you say something, you got to consider someone. Mm. You got to consider what Jesus came to do, and you got to consider what the devil came to do. Amen. Notice what he says in Hebrews chapter 3. Look at verse 1. Amen. The Bible tells us, let us consider the high priest of our confession. Who is he? The Lord Jesus Christ. Woo! So before I say something, I'm going to consider him. Woo! I'm going to consider who he is, what he did, what he promised. I'm going to consider how he loved me on the cross. I'm going to consider what he's doing for me at the Father's right hand. I'm going to consider what he's present to do in my life. I'm going to consider, amen, that the Lord is my help. What is man that I should fear? I boldly say, the Lord is my helper. He'll never leave me, never forsake me. He's with me until the end. I'm going to consider him. Amen. Glory to God. So before you say something, amen, consider, consider him. Woo, glory, the one that's able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that you can ever ask or think. If you'll consider him before you speak, oh, glory to God, he'll reproduce himself in your life. Oh, glory be to God. Are y'all seeing this today? Now, let's look at another scripture, amen, that indicates 
Amen. The effectiveness of our words. The effectiveness of our words. Amen. Notice here in Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 3. Look at verse 4. Glory to God. Now the Lord spoke this to me. Amen. Several years ago. And uh, he, he related it to, to uh, John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. He said, if you continue in my word, you'll be my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And he spoke this to me. He said, though I am the way, the truth, the life. He said, you have to let me be true to you. Amen. He said, he said, to the degree that I'm true to you, that's the degree that I can make you free or I can make you like the truth. I could reproduce the truth in you to the degree that you let me be true. Mm. And I thought about that. I control how true he is to me. Woo! Because look what he said there in Romans 3 verse 4. God forbid, let, let, look at that word, let, L-E-T, underline it, circle it, highlight it, let God be true. Amen. So you have to let him be true to you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Glory to God. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Let God be true in every man a lie, as it is written. See, this is what's written. And what's written, amen, glory to God, uh, uh, it's the law. It's the president. Amen. The Bible says the scriptures cannot be broken. Oh, but they can break whatever they can be broken. Woo, the scriptures can break poverty, break lack, break sickness, break disease, break worry, break fear. Woo, glory to God. Amen. For it is written, notice, that thou mayest be justified, made right, Prove to be right. How? How am I going to be proved? How am I going to be proved right when sickness and disease is attacking my body? How am I going to be proved right when financial oppression has seized upon me? How am I going to be proved right when worry has invaded my life and fear? How am I going to be proved right? He going to tell you right there. In what you say. In what you say. In what you say. And that you going to overcome when you are judged. Woo! Glory be to God. And that's why he says, let the sick say I'm healed. Let the poor say I'm rich. Amen. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Woo! Why? Because in doing so, you let God be true. In doing so, amen, you prove to be righteous. In doing so, you're going to be listed amongst the overcomers. Oh, glory be to God. So you have to let him be true in what you say. Amen. Somebody asked me, how can I get results in my prayer? I said, you have to watch what you say after you pray. Ooh, boy, that's gangster right there, Pastor Mike. Many people, they watch what they say while they in prayer, but they don't watch what they say after they pray. Mm. See, their conversation with others after they pray is different than their conversation with God while they were praying. While they were praying, Lord, I just thank you for my children. According to Isaiah 54, verse 13 through 17, I thank you that all of my children are taught of you and great is their peace. They are far from oppression, terror, and fear. It will not come near them. No weapon formed against my children shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against judgment against my children is proved to be wrong because I'm your servant. My righteousness is of you and this is my heritage. Heritage. In Jesus' name, amen. Then they get at work in the break room, amen, and they're not considering what they're saying. Girl, how your children doing? All them little devils, I don't know what they up to. Let me call home and check on them before something happened. See, you just nullified what you prayed and decreed concerning your children because you did not watch what you said after you prayed. After you pray, you have to watch what you say. That's when you're the most mindful. 
Amen. See, you, you've cast the care of your children, your financial situation, amen, your health and, and stability over on the Lord. And then you prayed and said in Jesus' name, amen. Now, it's your part. What's your part? Watching what you say after you pray, making sure what you say to others resemble what you pray to God. Amen. That's how you get results when you pray, is watch what you say after you pray. Woo! Glory be to God. Amen. Now, Jesus had to do the same thing. Amen. All the apostles in early church, they had to do the same. They had to evaluate and examine what they said, amen, after they prayed. They had to make sure that their conversation with others resemble what they prayed to God. Why? Because God always hear you, whether you're in a kneel position, a standing position, whether you by yourself in prayer, amen, or talking to others in the break room. Woo! See, you have to let him be true, not only while you're praying and reading the scriptures, but while you're talking to others in what you say. Ooh, boy, this powerful right here, you all. Amen. This word encounter. Amen. See, a lot of times people want to leave everything up to God. But what God is saying, today is your day of salvation. Today is your accepted time. If you'll draw now unto me, I'll draw now unto you. And if you'll let me be true in what you say, you will see what you say. Woo! <laughs> Glory to God. Many Christians don't see what they say. Because they don't watch what they say after they pray. Their conversation with others doesn't resemble what they prayed to God. Amen. So they're not letting him be true. Mm. Glory be to God. Are you seeing this today? I said, are you seeing this today? I said, are you seeing this today? Amen. See, in order for your prayers to be effective, you have to watch what you say after you pray. Amen. Glory to God. Why? Because God always hear you. Okay, look here with me, if you would, to John chapter 11. This is Jesus, and he's about to raise Lazarus from the dead. Amen. And let's look at how he dealt with God. And let's look at, amen, glory to God, what he said after he prayed. Notice there in uh, verse 41, then they took away the stone from the place which where the dead was laid. Lazarus had been dead for four days. Amen. And the Bible says, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I know that you hear it me. How often? Always. Always. How often? Do God hear you? Always. How often are you praying? Always. Even when you're talking to others. Amen. He's hearing. He's listening. Woo! Glory to God. He want to release this power to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ever ask or think. Amen. But what you say gives him access. It gives him the right of way. Amen. It make him able to do it without being accused by the devil of doing wrong. Woo! You get justified in what you say. You overcome by what you say. You let God be true by what you say. Amen. No, you don't have no right to talk how you want to talk. Talk how you feel, what you're going through, what others are doing to you. No. Amen. No, you have to consider your high priest of your confession before you say something. Watch Jesus. He was real disciplined in this. I don't know about you, but I like results. Amen. I said I like results. If you don't get results, man, you just get religion, tradition. Amen. Them the hardest people to, to get in faith. People who, amen, glory to God, don't watch what they say after they pray. You don't watch what you say after you read scripture. You can read Psalm 23, verse 1 through 6, over and over. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. And you still worry about your bills and financial situations. Mm. Glory to God. 
Woo! Boy, that's gangster right there. See, in order for Jesus to be your shepherd, you got to follow him in what you say. Amen. Watch this. What did I say? John uh, chapter, where we at? John chapter 8. No, 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 that ain't it right there. Amen. John chapter 12. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Watch how de disciplined Jesus was in, in, uh, in how he talked. Notice what he said in John chapter 12. Look at verse 49. For I have not spoken by myself, but the Father has sent me. He gave me commandment what I should say. Oh, glory to God. And what I should speak. That's why Jesus got immediate results because his conversation with others always resembled what he prayed to God. <laughs> Glory to God. Watch this. God didn't suggest to Jesus what he'd say. He gave him a commandment of what to say. Now, commandment is different from suggestions, counsel, or advice. See, you can reject counsel or advice without penalty but never a commandment. Mm. He's commanding us that we say what he say. Not suggesting. It's not an option. If you want his attention and intervention, amen, glory to God. Now watch this, notice. And I know, verse 50, I know that his commandment in telling me what to say is life everlasting. Whew. Death and life as well. And the power of what you say. Amen. The devil can't destroy you, kill you if he can't get the cooperation of your words. Your words gonna bring you out. Look at the prodigal son. Even when he messed up and got in bondage. Amen. In Luke 15, starting in verse 19, he got in some serious bondage. Amen. He had squandered all of his inheritance. He was living a sinful life in opposition to the will of God. And it got so terrible. Amen. You know, the Lord was showing me, where is that in Proverbs 15, I think? It says the way of a transgressor is hard. It's hard living in sin. Because it's, it's so in opposition to God, nature and good. Amen. Look there. Y'all want to see something? Look there in Job. Where is that? Job 20. Job 20. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 that Moses, amen, refused to be called, Hebrews 11, 24, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Amen. And, and, and he, he chose rather to uh, uh, the reproaches of, 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 of Christ rather than enjoy sin for a season, rather they enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. See, that pleasure is so short. Amen. Look there in Job. Job, where is that at, Holy Ghost? I was reading that not too long ago. Job 20. Amen. The Lord was telling me, he said, this is why I don't want you to get involved with sin. He said, because it opposes me. It hurts me. It bothers me. It hinders me from doing you good. Mm. Watch this. Notice Job, what? 20 verse 5. Job 20 verse 5. Notice what he said. He said, we will rejoice. Well, wait, that, that ain't Job. That's Psalms 20. Okay, that didn't look right. Okay, Job 20 verse 5. Are y'all there? Notice here. It says that the triumphing of the wicked is short. It's what? Show it. And the joy of the hypocrite for a moment. For a what? A moment. A moment. That's all it's going to last. The pleasures of sin is just for a moment. Just for a season. Can you see this today? And then look at Jeremiah 5 verse 25. I want to read that out of the Amplified Version. Amen. Then we're going to get back on that prodigal son. All right. And then we're going to talk about letting God be true. Amen. So you can overcome when you're a judge. So you can prove, be proved to be righteous. Glory to God. Watch this. Amen. Jeremiah 5. Look at verse 25. I amplify. 
Amen. Glory to God. Now, many people, they don't want a word. They just want the results of the word. They want the effects of the word. They don't want to have nothing to do with that process of engaging their soul. Amen. The Bible says in James chapter 1, verse 20, at 21, receive with meekness, what? The engrafted word. Why? Which is able to save your soul. Whew. Glory to God. Amen. Now, notice here in Jeremiah 5, 25, it says, I amplify your iniquities have turned away these blessings and your sins have, have kept, have kept good harvests from you. Mm, something is keeping something good from you. Amen. Glory to God. And it's sin. Now you may be saying, I ain't doing nothing. Boy, see, that's where the religious kick in. That's where it kick in. That's where it kick in. Listen, the sin that he's talking about here is unbelief. And unbelief is an unbridled tongue. Mm. It's a tongue that doesn't consider Jesus in what it say. Oh, mm. can y'all see this? It's a commandment to only say what God say. Now, the prodigal son, y'all remember? Hey, man, he got involved with sin. Hey, man, squandered all his inheritance. This is found in Luke 15, starting in verse 19. And the Bible says it got so difficult for him that he took a job with a citizen of that country feeding hogs. And it got so difficult. The Bible said nobody gave him nothing. Amen. And it got so difficult. Amen. That he began to eat, uh, think about eating the same food that he was feeding the hogs. But the Bible said he came to himself. Ooh, glory. What did what did he do when he came to himself? He started saying something. I know what I'll do. Woo, glory. Amen. My father's servant eat better than this. He deal with them. They got food to spare. I know what I'll do. He started saying something. I'm going to go back to my father's house. And I'm going to say to him, Father, amen, I've sinned against you. I repent right now. Woo. And the Bible says he started saying it and he started doing it. Oh, and what happened? He had an encounter with Jesus, amen, for restoration and redemption, amen. The father ran, hugged his neck, kissed him, put the best robe on him, amen, put shoes on his feet, the ring on his finger, and killed the fatty calf and started rejoicing. Woo, how did that all start? By what he said, he started letting God be true in what he said. The woman with the issue of blood. Mark chapter 5, verse 25. She had an issue of blood for 12 years. 12 years. Amen. Went to every doctor, every physician, spent all she had, nothing better, but rather grew worse. What happened when she heard of Jesus? Woo! What did she, what did she do? She started saying something. She started letting Jesus be true. <laughs> for she said, if I touch but his clothes, I shall be made whole. y'all seeing this today amen man i wasn't even planning on going in this direction but the lord amen y'all must be praying y'all believing y'all standing and that's why the lord is giving us a word why because he wants us to have an encounter with him for a change of story he wants to change our story he wants to make us a story to be told amen but he has to have our cooperation and participation amen and the first way you get it is by what we say. And before we say anything, we have to consider him, who he is, what he did, what he said. Woo! Glory be to God! Hey, 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 hey. Amen. Look at here. Notice. Amen. Let's get back into this scripture. Amen. Now, we don't have a right to talk how we want to. Amen. This is a commandment. He's, Jesus said, God has given me, the Father has commanded me what to say. Amen. And his commandment is life everlasting. Whew. Glory to God. Notice what he said, verse 50. And whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father has said unto me, so I speak. 
Amen. We can't follow Jesus and he can be our shepherd and make sure we don't want if we saying something different than what he say. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. This is how we get on one accord with Jesus and with one another. It's by us saying the same thing, speaking the same thing. Look here with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Let's pick it up in verse 10. This is the Apostle Paul talking to the, the church of Corinth. Notice what he said. Now I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all do what? Speak the same thing. That there be no divisions amongst you. Where's the division between us and the Father? Where's the division between us and Jesus? Where's the division between us and the Holy Ghost? It's in what we say. When we're not speaking the same thing, there's division. And the Bible says a house divided against itself is not going to stand. You ain't going to see Jesus manifesting in your affairs when you're not saying what he tell you to say. Whew. Glory to God. Can y'all see this today? Amen. Now, watch this. Because, see, you got to understand, unbelief, unbelief is a result of what you're saying. Amen. Glory to God. You're either validating what Jesus did, provided, and promised, or you're nullifying it in your life. The Bible said, let God be true. Every man a liar. Amen. So that we may be justified. Where? In what we say. Mm, that we may overcome when we're judged. Whew. Glory to God. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 6. Watch this. Amen. This is how the Lord showed me how to discipline myself right here. Matthew chapter 6. Amen. Glory to God. How to get immediate results. Even when you mess up, you can have prodigal son outcome. Amen. It's connected to what you're saying. Mm. That boy said, I know what I'll do. I'll go back to my father's house. Amen. And I'll say to him, Woo! Glory be to God. Woman with the issue of blood. Amen. She continued to say, When I touch but his clothes, I shall be made whole. Woo! Glory to God. Amen. Now watch this. Notice in Matthew chapter 6, the Bible tells us, and let's pick it up in verse 30. It says, wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which is today and tomorrow, is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O you a little faith? Therefore, take no thought. See, everything starts with a seed, a thought. Mm. And this is the way a person take a thought. See, a thought may come, to, you don't control what thoughts that come to your mind, just like you can't control who knock on your front door. But you can control who you let into your living room and give a glass of tea to. You can control the thoughts that you entertain. Mm. Glory to God. Like a, a pastor of late, amen, Kenneth E. Hagin, he used to tell us, amen, he said, now, you know, you, you can't stop a bird from landing on your head, but you can stop a bird from building a nest in your hair. <laughs> Glory be to God. He said, take no thought saying. So the way you take a thought is by saying. And once you take a thought, oh, that thought becomes yours. It manifests in your life. Amen. But the way you resist the thought is by saying too. Mm. What do you say? Uh, 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4 through 6. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. Glory to God, casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Amen. Glory to God. Now notice what he said. Take no thought saying. Don't you say it. Don't you say it. Because if you say it, you give it power to manifest. Death in life is in the power 
of the tongue, the ability to bring something to pass in your life is in what you say. Mm. Are you seeing this? Now I taught, amen, the academy students in chapel, amen, how to not take a thought, amen. And uh, it's in Proverbs chapter 30, and it bears witness in, in this setting as well, in this teaching as well. Look there in Proverbs 30. Let's pick it, pick it up in verse 32. If you have done foolishly in lifting up yourself, if thou hast thought evil, what am I to do? Lay your hand upon your mouth. Ooh, are you saying it? Are you saying it? Amen. Think about it. If you have thought evil, if you have thought and considered what people are saying and doing to you over what Christ did for you on the cross and doing for you at the Father's right hand, whew, that if you're considering evil, think it. Put your hand upon your mouth. Don't you say it. Well, I got a vent. I just need, oh no. Hey Amen. Remember, Jesus commands you what to say. Mm, it's a commandment. He want to be true. He want to make you right. He want to list you amongst the overcomers. But he has to have the cooperation and the participation of your words. Amen. You have to be disciplined in what you think and say before he do something. Now, the Lord showed me this. He said, thoughts are like seeds. He said, words are like plants and actions are like fruit. Mm. Seed, plant, fruit. Seed, plant, fruit. Seed, plant, fruit. Mm. Take no thought saying, and you'll never see the fruit. Mm. Woo, glory to God. But the good thoughts the Lord put in you, think on things, Philippians 4 verse 8, things that are true, just, pure, lovely, honest, and have a good report. You keep thinking on that, and you keep saying, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the sick say I'm healed. Let the poor say I'm rich. Let the weak say I'm strong. You're going to see the fruit of that in your life. Mm. I said, you're going to see the fruit of that in your life. Amen. 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 Now, let's get over here a little bit more. And we'll close. Amen. We'll bring this message to a close. I, 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 if we had a title for this message, we, we would title it, Let God Be True. Whew. Let him be true. Let him be true. Oh, glory. Let your situation, what you're going through, what you're facing, let that be a lie. Whew. See, whatever is true to you is whatever you let be true. Mm. And the way you let something be true is by saying, mm, glory to God. Jesus said in Matthew 12, verse 37, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The mouth speaks. The mouth speaks. See, your, your words are either faith's way of expressing itself or it's your problem way of expressing itself. Mm. Amen. Glory to God. Now watch this. Now I want to show you. Now, Jesus could not say. Matter of fact, God couldn't say what he wanted to say. Mm. No, 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 no. He couldn't. Notice in Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says he looked out on the world and he saw that it was dark and void and empty. But watch what he said. Let there be light. Whew. And light was. Ooh. He couldn't talk how it looked. Oh, glory to God. He had to talk like it was supposed to be. Like he intended it to be. Like he designed it to be. Whew. Glory to God. So he said, let there be light. And light sustains everything in this world. And light is what removes darkness. And light didn't come into being until he said it. 
Woo! Oh, let the sick say I'm healed. Let the poor say I'm rich. Let the let the let the let the weak say I'm strong. Amen. I'm strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. How did you get like that? By saying. By watching what I say after I pray. My conversation with others is the same as my conversation with God. Why? Because he always hear me. Amen. And if you never catch yourself, you ain't even focusing on the fact that he's hearing you. If you find yourself catching yourself, man, I wasn't supposed to say that. Man, that ain't right. Man, you ain't even trying. Amen. Like my friend used to say growing up, loose lips sink ships. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Now watch this. Now, notice what Ephesians 4 verse 29 says. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but only that which is good, which ministers grace to those who hear it. Mm. I often ask myself, is what I'm saying to this person, is it good? Is it ministering grace to them? Mm. Is what I'm about to text them? Is it good? Is what I'm about to put on my phone? I don't have faith. I don't know how to do this social media stuff. But ask yourself, is what I'm about to post, is it good? Will it minister grace to those who read it and see it? Mm. If it don't, amen, just repent like the prodigal son. Repent, turn from that. Amen. Glory to God. Change your mind for the better. Put your hand upon your mouth when you have thought like that. Amen. Stop saying it. Mm. And it'll stop happening. Mm. Start saying it. And it'll start happening. Glory to God. Death in life is in the power of the tongue. Now, let's look at this. All right. Now, notice God cannot say what he wanted to say. Amen. He had to say what was true. Amen. He could only talk the truth. <laughs> Amen. Woo, glory be to God. Why? Because the truth is that which is so, that which is accurate, and that which cannot be changed. Amen. Glory to God. Now, Jesus couldn't say what he wanted to say. We just read in John 12, verse 49 and 50, that he could only say what the Father commanded him to say. Amen. What about the Holy Spirit? Could he talk and say what he wanted to say? Well, let's go see. John 16. John 16. I trust that you got your Bible with you and you're following along with me in Scripture. Amen. John 16. Let's see. check up on the Holy Spirit to see if he got to talk like he wanted to talk, to see if he got to talk like he felt, to see if he got to talk, amen, like we were doing him. You know, the Bible talks about that in Ephesians 4, verse 30, quench not the Holy Spirit, amen. The Bible also talks about in Isaiah 63, 10, vexing and saddening the Holy Spirit so he could be vexed, saddened, and quenched by people. Not Christians. But he can't talk out of that hurt. He can't talk out of that grief. He can't vent. And, 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 and No, he can't do that. Look here with me. Notice there in John 16. Let's pick it up in verse 13. How be it, Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit. How be it, he, the spirit of truth has come. He will guide you into all truth. He shall not, shall not speak of himself. So he can't talk how you did him when you messed up. He can't talk out of that hurt. He can't talk out of that grief. He can't talk out of that quenching, out of that vexing, and out of that sadness. He can't talk out of that. He can only talk and say what Jesus and the Father tell him to say. Mm -hmm. See, look how disciplined they are. That's what make them one. They say the same thing. <laughs> and that's what's going to make us one. When we say the same thing, 
What are we to say? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. What are we redeemed from? Poverty. What are we redeemed from? Lack. What are we redeemed from? Sickness. What are we redeemed from? Disease. What are we redeemed from? Worry. What are we redeemed from? Fear. We're redeemed from all of that. All the harassments, the afflictions, and the oppressions of the devil. We're redeemed from it. Amen. Whew. But in order for redemption to express itself, it has to have the cooperation of what we say. The Holy Spirit can't talk how he feel. He had to talk what Jesus say. Woo, glory to God. And then he's in us and on us to speak that to us. To speak that to us. I said to speak that to us. Even the, the apostles in early church, they couldn't talk how they felt, how people were treating them. Jesus already told them what to say. Look that with me in Acts chapter 5. Look at verse 20. He said, go and stand and speak in the temple to the people. What are you going to speak to the people? How they treating y'all? What they doing to y'all? What they saying about y'all? No. Speak to the people the words of this life. Ooh. <laughs> Glory be to God. Are we speaking the words of life? I said, are we talking? the words of life. I want to encourage you. Amen. Be mindful. Amen. As we come to the conclusion of 2023, be mindful of what you're saying. Don't let your lip, your, your words be loose. Amen. Let them be disciplined. Amen. Let them be connected to the spirit of God, to Jesus Christ and the Father. And watch, this year will not end before redemption is speaking for you and giving expression in your life. Let me pray. Father, I thank you for everyone up under the sound of my voice, those who are listening and those who will listen to this message, that the spirit of the living Christ come upon us. Oh, that he endure us with power, that he speak through our lips, and think through our mind. And that which we say will be that which only we hear you say. And we thank you that as we decree that we are healed, that we are whole, that we are well, that we are blessed, we shall see that which we say. And I come against every force that's contending and that has incarcerated our words, I loose the captive tonight that we will only say what we hear you say and what we say we will see in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Well, I trust that you've been blessed by this word on tonight. Amen. Continue to call in and share your testimonies with the ministries. Amen. The Bible says that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. We love reading and, 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 and hearing those testimonies. So keep them coming in. Glory to God. I also want to appreciate every one of you, amen, who have supported and contributed and prayed for the Academy. We had a powerful Thanksgiving celebration, amen, on Friday night. Amen. Oh, it was so powerful. I want to encourage you to go to the Facebook page and listen to that service. Amen. We had uh, one of the judges in Nashville, Tennessee. He's a, a judge in the circuit court there. And uh, he he came and gave an awesome speech, an awesome encouraging word. Amen. And then we had others who came and spoke. And uh, I, we had our precious Pastor Poby. Amen. Him and Resurrected Life, they contributed a, a large seed to the academy. It was so amazing. It made everybody in there rejoice. Amen. Glory to God. So if you're led to give, 
and contribute to the academy. Our monthly budget is $22,000 a month. We don't get any government funding or any of that because we're a Christian school with a foundation of Jesus Christ. And we believe the kingdom is our supply. Amen. And so we just trust that the Lord will speak to you as you contribute to the academy. His favor will come upon you because you favored his righteous cause. You've given him a voice in the future. Amen. Through giving and supporting the academy. Amen. The Bible said, train up a child in the way they should go. And when they are old, they won't depart. Thank you for partnering with us in this kingdom endeavor. I also want to appreciate all the members, ministers, and leaders of the ministry. Amen. Perfection is our portion. Amen. Glory to God. I said the Lord is improving, making better, and completing the good work that he began in you. And this year will not end before you see and possess your portion of perfection. In Jesus' name, I want to appreciate all of you who are watching, amen, who tune in every week to our Word Encounter Hour. Whether you're a member or friend of the ministry, we so appreciate you. And we decree God's favor, his preferential treatment, his excessive kindness be upon you and that the Lord increase you more and more, you and your children. In Jesus' name. Well, we got some exciting things coming up here at the ministry this week. We're going to have the Thanksgiving service online. Amen. Glory to God. And then, amen, we have some powerful things planned for the rest of this month. Please tune into our Facebook page to be aware, knowledgeable of these things that are coming up at the ministry so you can cooperate and participate with us so you can partake with us as well. Amen. Well, as always, it's my prayer, amen, to our Father on your behalf, that his riches and best be yours. Amen. Glory to God, that his blessing be upon your life, that his goodness follow you all the days, his mercy follow you all the days of your life, and that you dwell in his house, that you be kept by him forever. In Jesus' name. Amen.